Hello and welcome to the vlog. It is a glorious day outside. The sun has just broken through the clouds. It's, it looks beautiful, there's a bit of blue sky overhead, but by heck, it is nippy outside. And I was reading in a newspaper this morning that apparently the UK is set to bask in an Arctic blast for the next couple of weeks, with temperatures down to perhaps minus 10 degrees centigrade. Now, I'm all right, Jack, because as you can see, I'm sitting here next to my lovely multi-fuel stove. And I thought it was about time I did a vlog about the stove, because this is terrific. It's one of my favourite parts of the boating experience so far. But there have been a few things to do with it. One or two minor, one or two more major. So let me start by casting your mind back to when I first bought the boat and when I had it surveyed. The survey pointed out that my stove glass was cracked, and that's a safety failure. It has to be replaced. It's held in by three washers, which are themselves held down by nuts. Unscrew those, and the glass should lift out. Sounds simple, but the nuts were rusted solid. I soaked them, nay, drenched them in WD-40 again and again, waited, then set about trying to get them off with a socket set. This proved difficult. They did not want to move, and when they did, it was to snap off in the socket and then prove immovable from there, ruining both my socket and the bolt on the stove door. Only one unscrewed properly, but even then the threads in the hole were stripped. However, at least with most of the bolts gone, I was able to get the old cracked glass out, and, optimistic that I would fix the bolts, set about restoring the door to its former glory. This involved removing the worn gasket, which came off in clumps and needed a lot of tidying up underneath, and chipping away at loads of loose rust all around the rim and underneath the old stove rope, which also had to be replaced, of course, as it forms the seal between the door and the stove and is critical. Here's what I ended up with. It just needs those bolts sorting. I'd read on a forum that this rusted bolts problem is common on the Villager Puffin stove, which is the one I have, and the only solution is to drill out the old bolts right through the metal and then stick new stainless steel bolts through from the front. Not elegant, but it should work. So, armed with a brand new high-speed steel drill bit, I set to work, gently but firmly. Sadly, as has been noted before, I am a bit of a DIY numpty. This hole was great, perfect, but this one went a little bit wrong, and this one turned out strangely elongated. Well, this one was a lovely hole, but too close to the raised lip on the front to actually get a bolt flush against it. So all in all, that was a bit of a disaster, and as you can see, I did end up buying a whole brand new door, and that was not cheap, let me tell you. It cost... I don't remember the exact figure, but it was at least £100, and I have a feeling it was around £150. And what's more, they pretty much had to cast it for me when I phoned up the supplier. They say, well, it's not an item we have in stock. They put the order through to the people who make the stoves, and when they've got enough orders, they cast a new one from the moulds. So I got that through. Lo and behold, it wasn't as easy as you'd think to fit it. It only hangs onto the stove with these two pins, so you just put it on the holes, slot the pins through in theory, and then the door shuts. But I guess because of the manufacturing tolerances of an item like this, you could hang it on one pin, and then it wouldn't quite, by a fraction of a millimetre, wouldn't quite line up with the other pin. Or you could put the other pin in and it wouldn't line up with that one. And you kind of having to force the thing and you thought, I'm going to break something in a minute or it's just not going to work. Anyway, to cut the long story short, I ended up having to take a, a small drill bit and put it through the holes in the side of the stove to make them just the tiniest, tiniest fraction bigger. I mean, it was ridiculous. It was shavings of metal here. And then, finally, and with a bit of persuasion, with a blunt instrument, I was able to actually get the stove door on. So, OK, now I have a stove with fresh glass. Oh, and the door came with new glass as well, so now I've got loads of spare replacement glass, but that's fine. Um, so I've got a stove. Next thing I needed to do was clean the flue, because I had no idea whenever that was last cleaned. As the door was off, and I didn't want loads of old soot crashing down into the boat, I covered the stove with newspaper and then went to the roof. 
took off the chimney, which is removable for when you go through tunnels, whereupon a long-handled furry metal brush can be poked down the stovepipe hole and scrape off years of accumulated crud which fell down into the stove for binning. This is quite a satisfying job, albeit somewhat mucky. So that was the stove effectively ready to light and all set, and indeed I did light it a few times and it was wonderful. However, one thing I wanted to do was get, as you can see I've got, this fan that sits on top of the stove. A lot of canal boats have them and the idea is they sort of waft the heat further down the boat. Now many canal boats have their stoves at the front, so half the heat is going straight out of the door. They put a little fan on top to blow the heat back down the length of the canal boat. I don't have that problem because my stove is in the middle and in theory it should go that way and that way. But because of the kitchen units, I was finding I wasn't get as much, getting as much heat going back down that way as I wanted. So one of these little stove fans seemed to be the answer. And they are ingenious because they are powered by the heat of the flames. They're also very expensive, typically around 50 to 80 quid, but I found this one for 40 and took a punt on it, though it does say unsuitable for stoves over 345 degrees centigrade, and I have no idea how hot mine gets. I bought it anyway, and as you can see it's very simple, a two-bladed fan driven by an electric motor which is powered by a heat reaction between two metals in the body. No batteries, no need to plug it in, it just starts when the fire's hot enough. And here it is, wafting the heat over the stove. You don't feel any breeze coming off it, which is a bit weird, but it does seem to work as the galley feels noticeably warmer. You have no doubt noticed that what's behind the stove is not the tiles that you will have spotted at the beginning of the video. It is in fact this silvery stuff. And that is because, as far as I could tell, there is, was, absolutely no fire protection between the tiles and the sides of the boat or the kitchen units. And when the survey was done, the surveyor said he couldn't see any signs of fire protection either. Now, I would presume that nowadays there must be some regulation about this and they must put fireproofing blocks in. You can get this material, it's, uh, I don't know, a centimetre thick and it stops the transmission of heat. But, as far as I can tell, there is none of that in my boat. Remember, it was constructed 15 years ago. And the problem with that was that if you put your hand on the tiles here or here, when the fire is on, they were absolutely steaming hot. OK, not so bad there, but that meant that the wood behind them was getting absolutely steaming hot. And even when I put my hand in this cupboard, inside, on the other side of it, the wood was too hot to touch. Now, I don't want that wood charring and then suddenly going up in flames. And um, these things can be jolly dangerous. So, to cut a long story short again, either I needed to take the stove out, chip off all the tiles, put some stuff in, put it all back again, a lot of effort, what I actually did was buy this um, foil. It's 50 quid per square metre, and it is designed to be used in cars around where the exhaust pipe is to stop the heat of the exhaust pipe going up into the body of the vehicle. And exhaust pipes can get absolutely roasting red hot, and you line the car body with this stuff, an air gap between the exhaust pipe and this stuff. You line it, and it reflects all the heat back. And it's terrific. It's self-adhesive, so it just sticks onto the tiles. And now I can put my hand here gently. And although the heat of the fire on this side of the hand is absolutely fierce, the metal stuff is stone cold, absolutely stone cold. The difference was astonishing. And what that means, of course, is all the heat is just getting reflected back out this way. And the first couple of nights I had this stuff on, I really noticed the difference as well. So not only is the fan blowing the heat that way, but the silver stuff is reflecting the heat out into the cabin and, importantly, stopping it from basically charring all the woodwork behind it and setting the boat ablaze. It was a, a bit of a pig to put on because I had to do it with the fire in situ. Cold, obviously, not hot, but still it was there and I wanted to put the metal stuff on in one piece. So. Yeah, it was a pig of a job, actually. A lot of sort of swearing and cursing and ferreting around behind it. And the bits in the corners I had to do as separate bits. But I'm pretty pleased with it, actually. It's made a, a transformation to how much heat comes out into the cabin. And I feel a lot safer for having it on as well. So 
pretty pleased with that job. You might argue it's not as pretty as the tiles, but I was never that bothered about the tiles, really, and um, I'm just happier to know that it is safe. So, all in all, terrifically pleased with the stove. It is a dangerous thing. I mean, it's a actual live fire on your boat, and if we're honest, these things aren't really installed in accordance with the manufacturer's specifications because you're in such a small space. They're supposed to have a bigger gap behind them and a half here. And it obviously there isn't the space. It just means that when you're poking them and raking the embers out, you have to be really careful that no little glowing embers come out and sit smouldering somewhere. So a bit of care have some fire extinguishers on board, have a fire alarm or two on board. And also, of course, you have to be very careful about carbon monoxide. If this thing wasn't burning properly and if it had any um, uh, vent venting from the side, your carbon monoxide could come out and gently kill you in your sleep. So it's all doom and gloom. But if you have a couple of carbon monoxide alarms as well, that is definitely worth having. So all the horror potential horror aside, and there have been canal boat fatalities when these things have gone up, but as long as you are careful, have all the fire extinguishers and so on, it is a wonderful, wonderful thing to have on the boat. When the weather outside is dreadful and it's raining and blowing and cold, and you're sitting in here with this and the lovely warm glow of the coals, there's just nothing like it. It is one of the best bits of being on the boat, I would have to say. Anyway, that is the story of my stove. I hope you found it interesting as usual. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.